We're on a river and we're mudlarking. Today we're at a location that we visited a few years ago. We've got the advantage of two rivers, the Ogmo and the Aweni, and also the advantage that we're only two miles from the coast. So something should work out for us on this visit because we're still having the issue of the storms and of course that's left us with high river levels here in Wales. So between two rivers and the sea, I'm sure we're going to have some finds. And one thing I'm certain of is we've got a gorgeous place to visit for the history today. Because the last time we were here, we didn't have the time to go to St Tyler's. But today, we're definitely going to get there. So that is certainly something to look forward to. But let's get started as we have a look on this beach under what is locally known as the Swinging Bridge. We're looking down straight away, I found a piece of river glass there and there are also bits of pottery we've got this here and this here so i think we're going to find some little bits and pieces but are we going to find anything bigger i don't mind little pieces as long as they're interesting would you like to see what i found oh yes let's have a look this is a good spot for well washed glass oh yes and nice. e and a v on there oh v Another bit of green glass, really well washed. Yeah. And a couple more bits. Oh, very nice. And... Oh, some ridge pottery. What is a mudlark without ridge pottery? And I've got a little bit of the base that tells me that this was a genuine Hartley's. Aha. Uh -huh. The clue is there. And... Oh, piece of tile. Well... Terracotta. It's terracotta and mm. it's smooth and I love it. And... Finally, mm -hmm. I've re just had an inquiry from uh, one of our viewers mm -hmm. with regards to the possibility of purchasing a Monkey Panda plane or pattern game. Right. So, I'll see how that inquiry goes, but if it does become a game, then that will be one piece I'll put in it. Oh, as that's seen lovely. Here, Very well worn piece of property, beautiful wheel pattern. All that piece needs is to be sterilized and cleaned because that is perfectly smooth and ready to go there we go so if in the next game i make that piece will be part of it look at that that's quite a big part of the pot mm. i wonder if that was blacking lead or whether it was ink it's a really nice size though mm. the pieces are getting slightly bigger is this that pieces are going to get much bigger Let's keep looking. What have you got? I oh, don't think it's a bit piece. of the same one because no. I think it's a slightly different colour. Yes, but it's another big chunk. It is. Ooh, it's exciting. <laughs> We've come to the edge of the beach. There's the river. Shall we go in? Come on then. Pop your wellies on. We're going in. And as expected, it is freezing. Right, let's have a little look. The water's lovely and clear, but there doesn't seem to be an awful lot actually in the river. So be careful because it's getting deep very quickly. 
what's that there? Oh, that's a big lump of pot. And anything else? Because we need to turn back before I drown. Well, I'm not going to drown. I'm just going to get very wet feet. Too late. It just went over my welly. Aha! It's a fishing lure. Right, we don't want that left in the river, so we'll take that home and pop it in the bin. I found a brick. Oh, what one have you found? Is that you know, is the question. Is it one we've seen before? I think now I can tell what it is. Right. Close up, I couldn't read it. Back here, I think it says Bringethin. Yep, of Bringethin. I've also found mm -hmm. a piece of plain, a lovely smooth off piece of oh, earthenware. Nice piece. It almost looks like an eggshell, doesn't it? It does. And that is going with my piece of patterned to go into that game. Good idea. I can also see something pirate related. Oh, is it a peg leg? It's not. Is it a patch? A patch? No, but it's probably as close to pirates as we're going to get this because we are close to the sea. Right, what have you seen? I think it's a piece of pirate glass. Oh, way too. Just behind you there. Just behind me. It's behind you. Well, there's a tiny piece of amber glass. That's not what you mean, is it? No, no, further up. Just up near the edge, near um, the driftwood. Oh. I get my shadow out by this bit here. That's the one. Oh, yes, that, that looks like. Oh, oh, look. What's that? Oh, wow, what does that say? You got a gold doubloon. Is this a gold doubloon? Do you think it's a gold doubloon? I don't think it's a gold doubloon, surely not. Underneath a piece of pyroglass. glass. <laughs> Extremely unlikely. Let's see what. We'll take it over to Phil. Put your glasses on, Phil. See what that says, just in case it is. I don't think it is. It's too shiny. No, I will put my glasses on. Yeah. Not just to have a look at this coin, but also to read this letter. Oh, right. Because this says, Hi, Phil. Hope this is not too cheeky. Found this gold bloom while clearing out my attic and thought that maybe you could let Caroline find the bloom on one of your larks. Or maybe find it in the garden, perhaps, falling out of a magic teapot. Jeff. Oh, thank you, Jeff. That was great fun. I didn't <laughs> thought it was a gold doubloon. <laughs> so Jeff, oh, well. se Jeff sent me this a while back. I'll cancel the world cruise. I was just waiting for the opportunity to see a place where I could put it so that you could find it. So there we are, folks. One slightly non-authentic, but very special gold doubloon. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks, Jeff. Hmm. That doesn't look like a rock. I don't think it's a leaf. I think that's metal. And I don't think it's medieval or anything. So look what it is. Ah, oh, it says V line. What do you think that was off? Is it a motorbike called a V line? Or a moped? A cycle? Something completely different, like a lawnmower? If you know what a V line is, let us know. It'd be great to find out. Hmm. It's just a piece of. Random metal from a V-line. you found anything, Mr. Johnson? Indeed I have. Oh, you're going to show us? Uh, yes, and one of my finds I'm quite excited by. Oh, right. Do I look quite excited? Yes. It's hard to tell, isn't it? <laughs> you reach an age when um, your feelings don't show quite as clearly. No. <laughs> and I passed that age long ago. Uh, first, bit of brick. Now there's a surprise. Yep, yeah, but old, old yeah. brick. Not many inclusions in it, they're all surprising, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, but uh, dark you, it looks look like, at the yeah, centre there, it's really... It hasn't been fired to the right temperature to get it to all go red, so... And we are in a locality, we have a little village here and it goes way back. We're talking the foundations of the original church here is uh, very, very old, which is linked, I hope, to one of my finds. But let me just show you this bit of glass first. Yes, that is a bit of glass. It's from something with a screw top and it's mm -hmm. nicely worn. And I can't see it's any writing on it. It's almost fluted on that end, mm -hmm. isn't it? Like if that was the neck of like a bigger pickle jar or something. Yeah, that's a nice bit of worn glass. Two more beautiful little bits of smooth, smooth, smooth white. Yeah. 
which is very white and smooth. Yeah, and again, perfect for a game of lino pattern because all the edges have been worn off by the river. Yep. And then my bestest find. Let's have a look. It's now, a piece of terracotta. It is. But do you remember we visited a street floor? Yep. Went to the Abbey, which used to have a floor made of tiles mm -hmm. back uh, sort of 800 years ago. Yep. I'm wondering if that's a piece from the old church here. Oh, let's turn it right round into the light. Because I think that oh, would have been yes. a brightly painted floor at one time. Look at that. Oh, it could well be, yes. Oh, that's at, a nice find. Yeah, looking at the way it's made, mm. you know, it's, it's far from perfect. But that paint does remind me of the paintings we see on the floors of ruins of ancient abbeys. Yep. And we have the foundations of an ancient church what, 100 yards from where we're yes, standing? it could well be. In fact, this seems as good a time as any to pop over there, have a little look at that church before we head on to our next location to do a bit more searching, shall we? Okay, let's go. Here we are in a very idyllic spot. The beautiful houses in this village are just what we would call chocolate box sorts of things that they used to put on the lids of boxes of chocolates years ago to give that sense of well-being spring flowers popping up everywhere there's horses and tractors going by and going about their business and we are in the grounds of St Tylo's church now as churches go this is not the oldest of churches in recent times we've been looking at Norman churches this one is about about 150 years old 170 170 years old 1850 thereabouts it was built but it was built on the foundations of a much more ancient church and you can still see the remains of the foundations and of course you can see the age of this place by some of the tombstones because they've taken far more than 150 years of way but as well as being a pretty church in the centre of a very pretty village there is a collection here that is historical and extremely relevant to those who study the ancient times of Wales because around the back of the church they have put together a collection of stones these are all marker stones of one kind or another Christian stones and they date to between the time when the Romans made their exit from the UK and before the Normans arrived. So whilst this church is only 170 years old, some of these stones are 1,500 years old. Now, we're talking ancient history there. And they are of such significance because the inscriptions on them just give a little peep for the historians into that time because of course the Romans they made lots and lots of references to what was going on when they were here because they were conquering this this nation and the Normans did the same but in that in between time they rely heavily on items such as these so a place of historic significance a place that has got great beauty a building that although only 170 years old certainly finds its place here in the landscape
Well, here we are at our next location and I hope you enjoyed looking around that church as much as we did. As we were making our way off the last little bit of river beach, Caroline kicked a little bit of wood and I've just washed it off and I quite like that. To me, it looks like E.T. crying because he wants to go home. <laughs> but it's definitely got the look of a head and an arm and hmm, I don't know, what do you see? I'm really into my driftwood, so that's coming home with me. But we are by a bridge. Now, I've got to be honest, bridges are not a rarity in this part. As I've said, two rivers, the Ogmo and the Aweni, so we're spoiled for choice. We've got swinging bridges, we've got stepping stones even down at Ogmo Castle, and there's a video of that which we made previously where I crossed the stepping stones. And that's an ancient way to cross a river. But here, this bridge, which we have shown before, does have a unique feature. Because just behind me in the wall, you'll see there are holes. Not big enough for people to go through, but big enough for a sheep. And this is known as the dipping bridge, because the farmers used to push the sheep through the hole, land them in the river, and then catch them downstream and dip them every year. Something I don't think they're doing these days, but the name is stuck. Hmm, an interesting place. But for us, the interest is in the river. Now, can we get in? That's what we're about to find out. Well, Phil is so close, he could just take one step to the side and he'd be in, but it's not really it's the best way down. Rather deep. Mm, it is. And over there is rather deep. There's a lovely island, look. No, mm, I don't think we can get to it though. Well, I've got a theory. Hmm. I think I can get off the edge of the wall here. Right. Cross that little bit and walk across the ridge. Right, okay, then let's see if we can do it. Okay. It's not going to happen, is it? Put the bag on. Right. Here we go. Phil has to get back up there when he finished. Hmm, this is going to be interesting. The less glamorous side of midlarking. Ooh, that was deep. <laughs> I'm down. Go find me some doubloons, some pipe bowls, some Fabergé eggs. Piece of tile? Mm, yeah. No, you're not tempting me out there for a piece of tile. Phil is determined to get in and find something, but I think he's going to end up very wet. I've only got one wet sock. Oh, there we are. Only one wet sock so far. That one. Right. Such a beautiful place here, and the sound of the water. Listen to that. Well then, you haven't got back yet. <laughs> No, I find you, thank you. Phil has realised he's not getting back up that wall. It's far too steep, so he's going to try walking across that deep bit and then scrabble up the bank in. Oh yes, no problem, look at that. What a fine fettle of a man he is. Well, he hasn't made it yet. But keeping the camera on just in case, we could have a disaster. What do you think, is he going to make it or is he going to fall in? I can hear you all saying, fall in, fall in, fall in. Oh! <laughs> it's Ooh. a bit deep there. Look at that. Yep. That's only an inch deep. Yep. But then it's squidgy. Yep. I trod on it and decided I'm not coming ah. in. <laughs> you stuck. Oh dear. <laughs> well, he's not he's firmly wedged. Ah, he's out. He's out. Yes, yeah, so is my foot. I survived. You did, just about. And I got a nice little bit of white. Right. That's to pop in again. Right. And this, at first I thought sewer. Hmm. But then I thought, no, bottom of a bowl. 
I would think so, yeah. See, the, the, as it fans out, you can see that would make quite a nice bow. Yep. And you can see just the lip where the base would have come across. There we go. Quite an old bit of... So was it worth mixing. all that scrabbling, getting a wet welly? Well, you never know till you go. And now? And now, in hindsight, <laughs> yes. you could argue that it wasn't worth the effort. Hmm. But I trust it was at least of entertainment value for those watching me try. <laughs> I enjoyed watching you try. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's enough messing around on rivers. I have already got a soggy sock. So let's have a go at messing around on the beach. Because I can see a tump of drift road down there just waiting to be explored. Mm, look at all this driftwood. Not some useless pieces for the sort of thing I want. It's quite a few useful ones. But I don't know where to get it yet or on the way back up because it's an awful lot to carry. What have you got? A dinosaur. Another dinosaur. Oh yes, it does look like Nessie a bit. It does. Nessie. Now there's an idea I could make a Scottish driftwood creation. Why not? Ooh. And look at this, I've got to take this. <laughs> it just abuses me. It's a chair leg. It's got all the carving, it used to be painted yellow at some point. I just like that. That appeals to my sense of humour. I'm taking that with me. Guess what I found? What have you found? I have found half a ball. Oh, the sun's very bright behind you. Let's have a look. <laughs> half a tennis ball. Right. And another half a tennis ball. Uh -huh. <laughs> Which means I've got a whole ball. Nice find. <laughs> what is a miller without finding a ball? It's looking good. We're finding Loch Ness monsters, planks and table legs. So we're going to head down towards the water's edge now and see if there's anything closer to the sea. But while we make our way down this shale, let's pop over to the shed a moment because I know you're not going to believe this. I have another little fantastic storage item to show you. Please don't shout at me in the comments. I know I was going to be good after the big desk, but I bought this before the desk. That's my excuse. Come and see what it is. Okay, I'm not going to lie to you. Yes, the shed is still in chaos. Things are beginning to take shape. And I have given Caroline a promise that her conservatory will be empty by tomorrow. So this is going to be a crazy busy day or so. But as you can see up behind me, the little cabinet for displaying my clay pipes has found its new home on top of the new desk. So that's looking good. I've relocated the fire. I've taken out some shelves, made some fairly major moves, but as I've made the moves, chaos has been the order of the day. It has to be admitted. So I've got rubbish on the floor over here. I've got stuff piled up over there all manner of things but what i want to show you now is the desk in position my desk that i had for my 60th and that's now in position my leather top and some new storage units that i've got to go on it so let's switch the camera around so you can see what i'm looking at okay so here we have the desktop as you can see i've taken one shelf out there as it was too low and I wanted to send the desk back as far as I could. Now, I've got some teapots here, I've got my bottles there, bottles there. These shelves will be rearranged, I dare say, as we go along. But what I have to show you today is a storage system, which I think is really cute. And I believe is going to fit neatly at the back of my desk here. Now, these are drawers but they are drawers with a difference. As you know, I like my drawers. I like keeping things. I like to put my little collectibles in and these are perfect collector's drawers, but they come from somewhere that makes them kind of special. Now, that's what I call a neat fit. Leaves me all this desk space to work. And I have three drawers, which seem to have things in them. But the interesting things on these drawers are what's written on the front. Because this one 
has a little label which says Nationals Saving Certificates. And if I pop that back, the one above it says Postal Orders and Miscellaneous. Okay, no prizes. I'm sure you've already worked out. This little set of drawers originated in a post office many, many years ago. But while I'm very pleased with my little set of drawers, that's only half the story. Because you guessed it, folks. Here comes another matching set. So if I put them just either side of this post here, just like that, they go flush to the back and we've got another set. And just to show they definitely were from the post office, this one says parcel post. Now obviously you didn't put the parcels in here, that would have been where you kept your paperwork. But there we go, parcel post. Absolutely brilliant. Oh, and I've even got a spare carrier bag for the next time we're out and about. Oh golly gosh, and that's a blast from the past too. It's a Christmas carrier bag and it's from Woolworths. Well, I just keep getting added bonuses over and over with this little lot. But what do you think folks? I reckon they look brilliant. So although I've lost an entire shelf along here that was displaying some of my bottles, I have gained these, which is going to give me the opportunity to store more pipes, pipe stems, small fossils, bits of china and glass. Also items that are useful for crafting, such as my pots of glue and small tools, screwdrivers, little hacksaws, etc. I could have everything to hand so that I can work here on this desk doing my crafting. So for a guy with a 12 by 6 shed, I've got a lot of storage and I've probably got in most people's estimation one too many desks. But I like it. Well, I hope you like these drawers as much as I do. I couldn't resist them. They're absolutely fantastic. That I'm not taking the labels off. I'm not going to label these drawers with the correct labels. I'm leaving those labels in because they tell a story. And I'll just have to try and remember what's in which drawer. Or I can do what I usually do. Just open all the drawers and usually find what I'm looking for in the last one. Don't know if anyone else has that problem. Anyway, I'm chuffed. As I say, there is a ban on furniture purchases for the shed. I have now exceeded what this shed is capable of. And Caroline has kindly offered to even find a home for the set of drawers that I brought in as a workbench if I can't fit it all in. But we'll see how that goes. Good news with regards to that set of drawers. They've been in the shed and it shows how dry the conditions are in here compared to in the greenhouse because now the drawers all open and close, which is great news, especially if Caroline's going to pinch it to use up in the house. So there we go. We're done here at the shed. But of course, before I send you back, I just want to show you one last thing because the sets of drawers, they've created a little bit of a ledge. And when you've got as many finds as me and a smaller shed as this, you use every possible space. So as I say, goodbye from the shed and we head back on our adventures out and about. Have a look what I've put on top of the drawers. You can see it's a tidal river that joins right to the sea. Should we pop in? You got your wellies on? Come on then, we're going in. Ooh, look, waves in the river. Lots of bricks and stones and pebbles. 
I can't see any ancient artifacts just yet. I'm not expecting to. It's mainly driftwood that came through the rock hall. You get a lot of white things like that that look like it can be pipe stems, and then you find it's just the edge of the stones hidden in the sand. Very pretty though, and it's just so relaxing to be by the river. To buy the sea. Over in the distance, there it is, Porth Core. We've been to Porth Core before now. Mudlarkin and Beachcombing. So this side of the sea is much rougher. You can see the wear on these stones. All cracks and rivets. Get right down to the edge. Tide is on the way out, so we're okay. We're not going to get washed in. Here come the waves. Ooh, look at that. Ooh. I think I'm going to go back now because I don't want to get wet legs. It's far too cold. Hello Mr Johnson. Hello. What have you found? I have found a very big piece of driftwood. Right. But I'm not putting that in the car. Which one? Ah, uh -huh, down by there look. Okay, yep, that's big. I but put my you... foot on it, you can see the size. And it goes all the way up there. If you want a plank? No, there's a very nice plank with some three screws. Ooh. But what's it found? I found a liquid face. At first I thought, oh, it's a hag stone down there, but I picked it up, I'm going to put two eyes. It's the sunshine, there. Two eyes and a nose. No, still can't find the sun. There, ha <laughs> ha. Oh, look at that. Got a funny nose, got a little stone stuck in there. You hold him up. Hello. Hello, Mr. Johnson, and what have you found? I, I've got a little bit of driftwood. Yes, it's a which I thought was quite interesting shape. A very manageable size, yes. And it's still a bit for you. Oh, that'll come in very useful. Thank you. But I just wanted to show us by my feet. It's a big one. Now, if you could imagine living local and being able to take something like this with you, then you could make quite incredible creations with it. Look at all the knots and tangles in that. That's wonderful, isn't it? Oh, wow. Look at that, it's like a hand holding the branch underneath. And that's why I came down here today, was because I actually found a website. I put in Driftwood, Beaches, South Wales, and this beach came up, Ogmo Beach, because there is a guy who's got a site who makes and sells Driftwood models and is prime beach for collecting is this beach and i wanted to see what was here some of it's too big to take but i'm sure we're gonna have a few more treasures before we leave what have you got this day mr johnson now i know that i tend to see things others don't see yes i'm sure everyone can see that this is a nice piece of well-worn timber perfect for caroline when it comes to her craft yes yep what about this no, I love that. I really do think it looks like a Christmas tree that, already. That's what I was thinking. That's what I was thinking. Christmas tree? Yep. A few decorations on there, do you think? Uh, it'll need a bit of tidying up. Oh, just a bit. I reckon that should go on with this. Think so? I think it's we should. It's a bit big, up. but I reckon it's worth the effort. Okie dokie. You found something else, haven't you? I have. Now, you know I like my walking sticks. Mm hmm. How's that? <laughs> Look at that. It's nicely washed that. in the sea. It is, isn't it? And see, I can even just shape it a little there, drown that off, and I got a thumb grip on the top. Very nice. But I'll tell you what I see, which is a, a really nice piece of wood, but I don't think you're going to carry it for me. I got a feeling by the look on your face, I'm definitely not going to carry it for you. Over there, should we go have a look? Oh my gosh. It is square. Look at this. Now, I don't know if that's part of a master ship, part of an old pier or a jetty, or something completely different, but look at that. If I put my foot on the side, it's dwarfing my foot. Let's have a look at it from this end. It's huge. Well, let's have a look. Hand spans. One and 
the half of my handstand wide and look at the bolts in that quite large they're fatter than my thumb that is one lovely piece of wood oh no do something fill again with another piece off your phone i go another one another dragon what do you think oh yes he's even got spiky bits on his is that nose that a dragon's head that. or what that wasn't a very good roar, was it? Very no, feeble. No, no. Phil's finding dinosaur heads all the time. So I thought I'd have a look and look at that. It's a very delicate one. Or a seahorse almost. But we say it's a dinosaur. Because Phil keeps finding dinosaurs. We want to find one. I did find a tri triceratops head over here. Do you want to come and see it? Do you want to come and see my triceratops head, Phil? What do you think my name is? Max? I don't know my Triceratops hops from my whatever the other ones are called. <laughs> Come and have a it's look. It's a dinosaur head. Isn't it, it is. It's not a, ne a head. Oh, there's a nice plank. It's actually a steak. It's really light. Oh, I have that for it. Look, poor old Phil. My pack horse today. Yeah. Making him carry all my wood. Over here. See if you can spot my Triceratops head. You know, it's all these bits of wood. Getting close. Oh, the one with the horns, is it? Yep. Look at that. It does look like a triceratops head, doesn't it? A it bit. does a little, yes. I know not a lot, but a little bit. I thought that was an interesting piece as well there. Mm. If you look at that there, it looks like I lay it down. There's a sort of dragon with his ear, and that's his eye. Move that bit out of the way. And there's a sort of pointy bit there, and his nose goes up a bit because he's a snooty one. And that's a sort of horn type thing. <laughs> oh, you could have this way. And there's his nostril. There's his eye. There's his ear with a little horn coming up the top there. Oh, so he could be a dual ended push me pull me dinosaur. They could be two birds as well, couldn't they? Yeah, two birds' something. head, yeah, sat on a dinosaur's head. <laughs> it's amazing, isn't it, what you could. Uh, see these things when you start looking. I'll take it home and see what I can do with it. Okie dokie. Right behind me is a beautiful panorama. Gorgeous view out over the water and in the distance the land head you can see is Porthcol and you can see the caravans on Treco Bay from here and we're gonna head across there now in the hope of finding some more treasures on the beach there at Porthcol. So let's Head over across the estuary. Well, we've got to Porthcorn. The sun is getting lower in the sky and we are getting tired. <laughs> I think Caroline's decided enough is enough. We've done two rivers, several beaches, and now we've decided it's time for some refreshments. So we won't be searching the beach here in Porthcorn today, but we will be having a little snack. That's a little snack and another little snack joy done. <laughs> now then, if you've enjoyed today's video, please give us a thumbs up. Doing, doing, doing. And don't forget, it'd be brilliant if you could share it with your friends on social media if you think they'd enjoy it. But the most important thing, till the next time we're out together, whether it's on a river, on a beach or wherever it may be, make sure you have fun. Bye. Bye.